Number one. What's up? It's that guy from Late Night Sex. This is my first vlog that we talked about on my announcement video the other day. And doesn't have a name yet. Got a creative name? Let me know. I'm open to ideas. Maybe I'll come up with one by the next time. Um, who cares? It's my vlog. We call it That Guy Shit Show. I don't know. Whatever. What I'm going to try and focus on this journey. Everybody uses that word journey um, th that I'm on, which basically is some major upheaval and significant life changes for me and people around me um, for many reasons. Um, it's all kind of happening at once. It's all, some of it's scary, some of it's exhausting, some of it is rewarding, refreshing, new, unwilling to let go of the old, all of it mixed in. Um, and none of it's being processed very well. And I thought that by doing this with you guys, if anybody catches on to the show, if anybody finds any humor or insight or drama into my drama, then I'm doing the right thing. Um, if somebody is not handling or processing major life events because they're scared, confused, whatever, not alone. I think we all handle those things in similar fashions. My problem is, is my background, what formed me, what shaped me, what identified me as who the man I was going to be, its biggest flaw in its creation was independence. I was two ways forced to be independent by my own will, as a desire to get away as a desire to never have to go back, as a desire to be the one that severed all ties because ha, I could, and I did. Um, but it was also from the other side of my family that I was the one destined to succeed. I was set up really early as the smart kid, the kid who caught on to life easy, caught on to lessons easy. Um, the celebration of my success was also the mental abuse to my sister. Not fair. Uh, it's just putting two, those two kind of things together. And so those two things combined have created this. <clears throat> and what that has done is it has caused me to shut down the entire world any feelings any emotions dealing with any stress any big decision making it's nobody else is in my circle nobody's allowed in my circle walls are up iron gate is closed and all of a sudden I start making all of the mistakes on my own and that's because only I can be responsible for the six mile. I don't want to bring anybody else into that. Well, something I learned in the this process, and we'll explain the big three, what, what's going on, is there's people around me that now at this phase of my life won't let me walk alone. It's not a choice anymore. And I've never really had that put upon me in a way that it was overwhelming, flattering, humbling, unfamiliar. And it's been a big learning curve. Um, the girls from the channel, the Late Night Snacks, Dewanda, Irish Melly, um, Lady Di, Gary, uh, BRT, um, his support has been astronomical in people who I have found 
a family and extreme closeness and all of us are from such different walks of life and not really a part of each other's inner circles of our own individual lives but yet we have our own really strong circle now and that's really the core of this unwillingness to walk alone came from the very different set of values that um, the friend base and independence that I surround myself around um, was just new and so doing this vlog is my choice and it's a way to process things that are happening around me that on a normal day and a normal fat guy day I wouldn't process yeah they did let it go forever and then that would hurt me in the long run because it was a skill or emotion or something I never dealt with or I would finally deal with it in the most destructive way and hopefully with this process this, something starts to mold and change for me and the people around me don't know we'll see um, but I keep talking about this process this journey this this whatever you want to be secretive about it's the big three they always talk about the big three that you shouldn't do in the midst of another life crisis and that is you shouldn't move or start a new job shouldn't submit that change you shouldn't you know uh, block out or un death or um, uh, birth you shouldn't walk away from that and you shouldn't go through a marriage or a separation divorce I'm going through all three all at the same time and Duanda here at the channel she keeps reminding me when I get really go from zero to ten in a second it's okay you're going through all three she calls it the three you're going through all three and the thought of that coming from an outsider looking in on my life and realizing the enormity of what I'm going through seems through my eyes so small and why does it seem so small I was thinking tonight before I started this vlog I'm not processing again not dealing with it it's like ah tomorrow I'll do this next day I'll do this and there's no healing process going on it's just ignoring ignoring and um, moving on I'm a firm believer and I don't think this process will change that but I'm a firm believer in understanding realizing, and accepting the end result that is going to be when you have a finality around the end result there is no coulda shoulda woulda there is no long-term delaying and putting things off and trying to create new roads and new avenues when you know deep in your soul that end result is the end result and so I'm in the process right now of a couple things in my life of just getting to the end result I know it's there I know what it is I know how to get there it's just let's, let's do it and so let's each episode I mean, I'm not going to make these downers. And, oh, let's come to that guy's pity party. Um, I do enough of that every day. Actually, I do a lot of ranting every day. But I'll talk about ranting in a minute. Um, but I do want to touch on what's happening in, in all three categories separately. Each day or each vlog if I can. So that way, if you do engage in a story, if you do want to tap into the bit of my life and share your story share your advice um if you see something if you're close to me or know me or family or whatever and you see something that is just blaringly obvious and i'm not seeing it point it out what the hell right but just engage this i created this channel with the girls because in a time in our lives all was three of us when we first started coming from another group where the fourth was part of that group um, we were all together 
in this sense of limbo. All of us were home. All of us were in on, on some sort of disability or um, home as a as that was your job from the family. Um, that's not easy is what people think. Um, it's not retirement. It's not a fulfillment of what you've done. It's It sucks um, to just be told you are unable to contribute to society anymore and you are here is what we now are going to structure around you that you can and can't do especially when you've been a professional worker all your life um, I'll go in my past in another episode for, for that for that sense but it's 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 devastating it's devastating on my heart psyche it's devastating on the mental ability to get structured and get through the day and the longer the days go and the more the years go by you just become jelly your mind just becomes just like an idle sludge and things just kind of soften around you and everything just kind of seems like you're just waiting in a pool because there is no goal there is no project to work on there is no uh, uh, investment to turn in that you know all these things you can do is just today I'll do I think I'll do this I'll cook a BLT this morning I'll eat whatever it, 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 there's no end goal there's no purpose there's no contribution to you know getting up and going to work every day or getting up and going to school every day it's a huge life change for me as the kid who was brought up to be the one to succeed in school be the one to succeed in college have a professional degree um, I went about all of that wrong but I still tried to go about that because I was destined to do that that that's what I was told you you will be that person ironically my niece filled that void where I failed um, and a lot of it who well, we'll talk about my niece when we get there but um, that's my twin that's my doppelganger um, but so the big three I'm, I'm born everybody already we're 12 minutes in um, the, the death of my father death and loss is one of the big three that, that I'm going through and it's, there's a couple of things of death and loss that I'm going through um, first of all let's talk about the dogs because the dogs are a huge part of my life if not per se, the biggest part of my life um, through all of my disability and Rehealing and um, learning how to be this version of me, um, and I will vlog about that one day, maybe, because um, it was a very, very, very rough road, and now it's a, a re rough road again. Um, my dogs were my spirit guides. They were they they were the ones that were who were able to guide me, transfer energy to. A focus that I normally would have focused on the pain and on the woe is me and on the loss of myself. Um, so they're special. And I had two dogs during my disability. My beagle, Kovu, who passed shortly after I'd re pretty much recovered. And then it was just me and Boga. And Boga's my little mutt kind of little guy and he I called him my dark shadow because during that time when it was just me and Boga for about a year or so um, Boga became part of my shadow he was never left my side in any way shape or form he was a every room anywhere I went Boga couldn't function without being in my shadow he was my little dark shadow and the unspoken love and support that that energy gave me in a time where I was really missing Kobu because Kobu was a really special guy to me um, is irreplaceable. I, I actually f feel like I owe Boga something. And he's dying. And I have not accepted that. And I have not processed it, thought about it. Boga's death has become a chore. Something on the list that I got to take care of. Because um, I am going to put him down. Because he's 
got extreme uh, uh, dementia. He's in a state now that he is going in these fits where he doesn't even recognize anything around him and he attacks. You know, I've gotten bitten several times. Uh, last night, about four o'clock in the morning, he woke up in a rage and just like scared the hell out of me. He's trying to attack, and you know, somebody that doesn't know dogs or would know what dogs bring to a person would be like, "Oh, well, I'll get, if they're biting, to get rid of them." It's not his fault. It's not that easy. And I've actually kind of. It's become a problem for me because I'm making it a problem for me because I think I want it to be a problem for me. I want to be able to say, you got to go because of this, instead of just accepting nature and realizing it's his time. And I know when I decide to do it, there's going to be a lot of guilt. I have recognized that, and yet, I'm not dealing with it. So, no. Suggestions? Comments? Then there's the one you all know. There's Nuka. Um, Nuka I got from a litter when he was too young to leave the litter. And I had to bottle feed him, wean him you know, kind of myself. And he missed that period in his uh, weaning that he didn't get any of the you know, guidance or uh, instincts or teachings from his mother. He got all that from me. And he's, he's damn special. He is the most unique dog I've ever um, owned because he's not a dog. I mean, he is. He's canine. He's four, you know, four legs. But he thinks like a, a kid, a child, because he, um, he seeks permission for everything. He seeks guidance and acceptance for everything. Unlike, you know, he's a complete beta dog, but it's a different type of approval. It's not like a dog trying to get attention because he's just wagging his tail and happy. He's actually seeking permission to do something. Like a child would ask, they can build a Lego set or, or, or whatever. Um, he's sensitive. He gets his feelings hurt. When you discipline him or, or tell him he's done something wrong, you could just see in his whole face and demeanor that his feelings are truly hurt. Um, so there's all these special you know, considerations I always have with Nuka, and I'm really incredibly protective of him. And not on a, my dog, this is my dog, and this is my dog, and you know, spoil him. You know, my, my, my parents were crazy with dogs, and it used to aggravate the living hell out of them. And you know, I've told people before and, um, that not everybody on the planet loves your dog. Not everybody on the planet world revolves around your dog. And when you make that so, um, you create kind of resentment around your own dog. Nuka's attention that he gets, like Boga doesn't get that attention. Nuka, uh, Kovu never got that attention because they were dogs. They were dogs that I loved, but they were dogs that would do dog things and um, have dog instincts and, and do what they need to do. Nuka's weird. He's special. And a lot of the stuff is he, um, I worry about him because he's so sensitive. He, he, he emotionally responds to something so quickly. And so I'm really protective of him. And with the big three that I'm going through, with Boga's death getting ready to come up, I think I'm more focused on how Nuka is going to respond. And the big change that's coming up, we'll talk about in a minute. Um, everything that's stressful that I'm going on, um, Nuka was pretty traumatized during the whole thing and that keeps me awake at night that my life and the things the chaos that went on in my life created trauma for the one thing that I tried more than anything in this world to protect and maybe I'm overprotective of him maybe he does need to back off and start learning for himself but it's more than that mother hen feeling you know I was a mother hen, just like you know, women with their own babies. I weaned this dog. And those of you that's ever weaned a dog or a cat, or even you know, a rat or, or whatever, there's something different there. There's there's a, a different soul. There's a different instinct. Um, anyway, you, you guys will hear enough about him because he's part of this whole process of things that I'm dealing with. Um, so that's the death of Boga, and then. 
the death of my parents. And I say parents because I'm going to give a little bit of background, not going into a major life story, um, but give you enough to understand the story, is when I was young, very young, like four years old, uh, my parents went through a extreme, aggressive, explosive divorce. Four years old, I didn't know anything about it. I just knew the fighting uh, that was going on in, in, in the house. And I knew that's at four years old was when I knew the only certainty I had in life, the only lo- lock in place was my sister. Everything else around me could be chaos. Everything around me else could be pain, could be abuse, could be you know psychological mind fucks, could be whatever the hell. Uh, challenge was fed my way, but she was there, and she was going through the exact same thing I'm going through, and she's the only other person on the entire planet who really truly gets me, because I'm the only one that gets her, because nobody else has walked in our shoes. And we come from a really unique situation. Uh, People have gone through similar stories, but ours is unique in its own way. And that was my dad remarried quickly after. Not, yes, the next day, but a couple years after. And the woman that he brought into his life, I believe, was brought in to be his house person you know to take care of the daily needs that a woman at his time should have taken care of because he was trying to support the family financially through his job through the air force and be the man of the family that he was always taught he had to be and he couldn't do it alone he couldn't do it without a woman without a mother so we as these two little kids that didn't understand anything were told how's in this strange woman's in my house one day and we were told there's your mom you call her mom. That's all you call her. And that's how it will always be. And there's no questions asked. That's how it went. And what a, years later, what a mind fuck that was. And what we learned, learning, is, you know, I'm not here to drag anybody through the mud. I'm not here to, you know, capitalize on somebody else's life that I can't they're not here to defend themselves but for me I believe that this woman with some mental OCD PST, you know, PTSD problems that she had um, did her best to remove us from the equation from our father our father's attention our father's love maintain control of that and only doll it out if she felt that was necessary. And how did she go about doing that was manipulation, lies, deceit. She got to a point where everything in our lives he believed, even over his children that he was trying to protect. When my parents divorced, my dad did step to the plate and did everything he needed to do to um, maintain that his kids were safe. The one thing he ever asked for, the one thing he ever worked for, that he ever wanted, that I've heard him say as a mantra a million times in my life. No matter what, you will always be safe. You will always have a place to go. You may not like it, but it will be safe. And that's my job, is to keep my children safe. And we could do anything in this world that was just atrocious to him. Throwing your kids out on the street was not an option in our home. There wasn't a thought that never crossed anybody's mind because it was just the opposite of my home. If you did something that was outlandish against his rules or society or something like that, you were there to be under his rule and under his thumb and under his protection, his safety. At the end, when he just recently died, she even managed to take that from him as well. And from us. She got rid of everything of our family. Everything that my dad worked his ass off for God knows how many years and then suffered in his later life with 
health problems that we, no man should have suffered through. Just like that, she got rid of it all and denounced us. Congratulations. Judge what you want. I'm not here to rip, rip anybody down. You know, that's, that's, my, that's my side of the truth. That's um, my story. Other people can tell their own story. It's mine. So if you know the woman that I'm speaking of, let her say whatever the hell she wants to say to you. I don't give a shit. Um, so that's that. So my mother, my real mother, this is where things get a little bit complicated. We had, she had some visiting rights with us after they had divorced. We had gone to see her during holidays, during uh, Easter break, during Christmas break, things like that, while we were still in the States. Then the two of them, my father and my stepmother, um, got stationed in England in the UK when um, I was going into the fourth grade. We go to England. We were living in this one house quite a ways away from the base for the first year. And while we were in that house, we still spoke to my mother, my real mother, my birth mother. My, I, I had a relationship, a standing relationship with my, um, my mother. These are two little kids that only knew their mother, and then the stranger was brought into their house. But yeah, they still maintained a relationship with their mother because my dad wouldn't take that away from us either. And then we moved to another house in Alconbury. And if my sister's watching, any of these facts are wrong, please correct. But we moved to a house in, in Alconbury Village, and there was no more calls. And there was no more letters. And most importantly, Certainly, and I think that most hurtful is there was no explanation. And there was, when questions were asked, it was always, it is what it is. I don't know if I was to protect me or save the, them from answering hard questions, but I never got the answers. That, that's it. Lock, stock, and barrel. It is what it is. My sister spent, maybe one day my sister will speak on this, but my sister spent years of torment blaming herself for this and at the same time basically raising me. My sister taught me all the values that a woman teaches her son as a mother. I got that from her, not, not this stepmother and not my real mother. Um... All my social cues, all my basic life skills, all my basic education, tying your shoes and ABCs and learning how to read and all of that. All of that was taught by my sister because that was her promise to me to make sure that I was protected. So I was always coddled. I was always the protected one. While she was hurt and she was out there you know, f feeling like the world was turning against her so she's blaming herself and my sister went through a lot of pain from that and so life became a mystery there were no answers there was no opportunity to ask questions and there was no answers well just recently one of my friends Richter um, he helped us and we found my mother and she had passed in the 90s and she had suffered she died of uh, brain brain cancer and to process all that to close that chapter because one thing I had in my life was every morning I would wake up and I literally would think today might be the day today might be the day that something kind of falls my way and I hear from her or I hear news from her or I get a feeling or something happens because I so desperately craved two things. I craved the answers. I wanted to know her story. As painful as it might have been, I want, I'm, we'll talk about my, how I feel about people, but I want everybody to have the opportunity to tell their truth, to tell their story. And I'll never know. And to know that she suffered. I don't know if she suffered alone. I'll never know that either. And to know that I could have had a part of that life at least through high school. That was coming back to America. I had years with her. 
coming back to America and nothing. I don't know what I would do. It scares me to think what I would do if I ever really found out cemented, solid, provable fact that this stepmother had a hand in her disappearance of our lives. There's a dark side of me now. There's a real need for um, pain to her because I'm harboring all the pain that my sister carried. I'm harboring all the pain that I carried. And I feel that after I was coddled all these years, it was my responsibility to inflict that back. And it's darkening me. It's really scaring me. Um, talk about that another day. So she died, lost that parent, lost those answers. And then I lost a lot of relationship with my dad over my adult years because of conflict with, with decisions I made and my sexuality and distance and space. I, I created my own independent life in San Diego um, to get away and made some really selfish decisions. And, you know, we really distanced our relationship both of us in his later life when he was really ill and I was really ill I was recently went over some text messages that went back about a year on my phone and it was really hard to understand and hard to accept that he tried and I didn't I can't process that guilt right now um, I don't know. I, I'm realizing more that in that scenario, at least in the end, I'm more to blame. I wasn't there when he died. I was the only person that was here during COVID. His, my entire family was at his bedside, not me. Again, this whole symbol of me not being there, of me choosing not to be there talk about it later um, so that's that so I don't have my parents anymore and I and, and just the other day was the first time I started thinking about my dad and started realizing some really deep deep rooted stuff and it hurts um, so people have loss of difficult relationships of parents and stuff feel free to comment join the story um, help somebody out help me out I, I don't know how to deal with this um, we're, we'll get there Maybe I'll have a nervous breakdown before we do. I don't know. Um, but on top of that, because of a lot of life-altering, there's a lot of things on both sides, a lot of things just in life, um, a lot of catalysts for a lot of different reasons. Um, I'm going through a separation and a divorce. And neither one of us had processed a moment of that. And it was, it's got bad. It got ugly got petty and that was after fighting so hard for it we were a part of the whole gay marriage prop 8 movement we're in a state where a lot of resentment a lot of real cruel petty behavior but people ask how I'm going to handle this side of the situation on my vlog I'm not talking about it and that's not me being closed off to the blog. Is That's me being fair to the other person. That our story is two people's story. That I only have a part in. And it's not my right to give the other part. And in a story like this, it's not right to give the sum of the whole without both parts. I'm not going to drag somebody through the mud. So just know that part of the big three part of the process is there's a separation and a divorce that's pretty bad um, then there is the move I had not intended to leave San Diego with everything that was going on with COVID and my health and and Nuka and um, you know my separation um, he had decided that he was going to leave and I was going to stay here in this house where we were, have been for almost the last 20 years and trying to get some shit together 
and get some focus and get some independence back because I pride myself on the independence I have and just simplify. Well, that was taken from me as well. The shoe dropped and the landlords are selling right in the middle of COVID. Another COVID thing that has happened to another group of people um, that um, COVID hurt that family and they lost what they had. Therefore, they needed to sell to recoup some of the loss that they had. And now our family is, is suffering for it. So I'm having huge life change in this instance because I'm going to a situation that now I think about it got kind of passed down through my sister and her children. I'm going to safety. And that's to my nieces, my sister's oldest daughter. Um, I'm going to her home with her and her husband and her two kids because that's family. Kaylee and I are extremely close now. Like, uh, you know, like I said, we're like doppelgangers, two sides of a coin. And Kaylee is offering me with her family what my father always promised. You'll be okay. You'll be safe as long as I'm here. I will always have a place for you. And to pride myself on the independence that I had my entire life and lose it all. And the echo of my father that I resented so bad for not following through with that promise, he did. It's there. I'm going to his safety. It just happens not to be in my childhood home. It's through his blood and through the things that he instilled with my sister who always took care of me, who taught that to her daughter, who knew it was the only thing to do. And I have a lot of stuff going through my mind about it. It's, it's hard to insert yourself into a person's life when they're going through their own life changes. And I'll talk on that for a moment. Um, but so there's going to be some anxiety. And what's surprisingly about me and Kaylee's relationship, I'm able to talk through that anxiety with her. I'm not able just to hold it back and just show up and work through it myself. We have been talking about all this on a daily basis. And that has helped. So Kaylee, I love you. Donna, I love you for these amazing children. My vlog, and first off, I'm going to wrap up the first episode. I knew I'd Michael Diary the mouth. Um, but my vlog is going to continue kind of a transition into Kaylee's vlog. Remind, she will start vlogging on this channel to explain and, and share her story. And her story deals with her uh, health and, and things that she's dealing with. And you'll get to see that journey when um, she starts it and I get there. And we continue our kind of family shared journey together. And I think it's going to be fairly interesting to hear my story for a while. To hear the changes in how I got to that story. And then to see me transition the story into her story. But now me being up there. Already there as a part of her story we can continue on together um so i'm pretty excited about the future of this vlog i'm hoping you guys tune in i'm hoping a bunch of new people just searching the web for i don't know what i'm going to call this word i'm going to tag this but just know that in the state of the world right now there's a lot of people hurting and i promised i would mention this and the only thing it's one thing in the entire world that I hold true in my heart. And that is everybody. I don't care if you like them, hate them, don't agree with them. Everybody deserves recognition and respect and the treatment of a human being. Foremost, there are other people in this world they have their own histories and thoughts and feelings and emotions just like every single one of us. There is not a soul in this world that in their own world, in their own existence, is more important than your existence. There's no such thing as that kind of entitlement. And the way the world is going, especially this country, and this who gives two shits about another human being, 
and the lack of self entitlement, the, the massive self entitlement to the lack of respect to other people has during this whole process for me and my own personal journey has really bummed me out because how did we become a society of free thinking loving people to not just hating or picking aside and battling just dismissing other human beings there's been times in history where Yes, we've taken large groups of people and dismissed them and eliminated them and genocides and stuff like that. I think we're in a genocide. We're in a genocide with this COVID because of the lack of response that we as a society and we as a government have treated people who have gotten this disease. Same thing happened with AIDS. Um, same thing happens with addiction. You know, there's addiction out there and we turn our back to it, mental illness, and we turn our back to it. Um, you know, now COVID and we turn our back to it and AIDS and we turn our back to it. What gives us that right? You know, if you go outside and you don't wear a mask because you feel you have a right, fuck off. Seriously, you don't have a right. It's not your right. Because you're deciding for me then. Um, and, and that's the only thing in this world that gets me really heated and so a lot of that energy is focused on the republican way of thinking or the conservative way of thinking and for me it's not that it's the human way of thinking and they've lost track of that and some democrats have lost track of that and there's only one thing in this world that i judge because i don't judge anything else as far as just you know amble to the table judge is i judge intentional stupidity when you know and you're just tuning out and you're just being tenacious being obnoxious and stupid for just because you you think you can and you're free willing that to happen I don't have any respect for you and I'm talking about the people that are out there making up their own rules not giving a shit about what we as a society have felt is chosen to do together to, to fight this thing or to bring our government together so that we function as a society. I don't care if you believe in what I believe in. Respect me as a human being. Don't force yourself on me that's going to cause me physical harm. We are in a genocide. And we just started. And it, the genocide was caused by a lack of respect for other human beings, period. You can fight all you want about the causes and the roots and what happened and who did what. The bottom line is, is people in this country feel entitled. They're spoiled. They think their little daily lives comforts is more important than everybody else's daily life and comforts. We all think this sucks. We all think that going out and wearing a mask and stifling in the heat and seeing the, the visualization of it and, and businesses closing and our friends losing their business, me losing my home because the landlords lost their home. This all sucks. Your suck doesn't get any better than my suck. But you'll see me put on a mask. You'll see me social distance. You'll see me wash my hands. You'll see me read and educate myself on what I need to do next to help you. And I'm going to rant about this forever. So if you, if you don't want to tune into this because I am talking about human behavior and the human connection, then you don't deserve to be watching this vlog anyway. And that's from this, that guy. That's what I'm about. I may fail myself. I may fail some relationships. But I'm not going to fail as a human. I'm not going to treat you like anybody else is a lesser person than you just because I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. I think you're stupid. I think whatever's going on. But you're not going to get that mistreatment from me. Nobody should be getting that, giving me that mistreatment. So if you're participating in that kind of toxicity in the world, find a mirror in your house and look in the mirror and see you like the person you're looking at I can face my own shit in my own mirror 
There's a lot I don't like that I see. There's a lot I accept that I've done. Can you? Just saying. Good night. Bye.